Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and this video offers advice about how to get the best out of the August new moon on the 8th of August. So the new moon has an energy with much inspiration, where issues of what nurtures you are key. But it comes at a super tense time. And so I'd definitely recommend that you set aside some time to connect with the energies you're feeling at the time of this new moon. And it offers quite a, a, a complicated and, and fraught energy. But remember that developing your inspiration and protecting the nurture issues in your life have to have their place. Even though you might be being called to bring in some quite revolution almost in your life. And certainly there's a similar energy of revolution running in the societies we live in. So do set aside some time to really connect with what you're feeling to allow the key issues to arise in your consciousness to allow into your consciousness awareness of what nurtures you and then to identify what changes even what revolutionary steps you need to make because actually, the full moon also has within it Mars in kingly Leo. So it's a good time to implement the realisations that come to you through the use of your intuition. If you allow time to work through this on the 8th of August new moon. So it's a question of what intuitive openings and nurturing possibilities can guide the caring warrior. So I say that the energies of this new moon are intuitive and should be given space and ideally use of the right vision or contemplation methods in your life at this time. So here's a bit more detail about the astrology. And the first point is that Mercury is in the Gandanta zone at the end of Vedic Cancer. And Gandanta zones are places of quite sudden events often and places where the substantialness of this world is thin and so we can feel very unprotected, but the whole point is um, the, the thinness of the veil between this world and the eternal means that we can be open if we allow ourselves to very spi spiritual realisations. So remember to value what nurtures you as you open yourself to increased intuition and then let new vitality arise. Limit what drains you in your life. Limit, make decision to limit what takes you from your best self, your inner flame, the true you. So it's about making space tomorrow to make decisions as to what to cut from your life and what to prioritise in your life so that you'll become more whole, more in your body, more embodied that is, and more connected to the methods that are right for you for gaining your needed intuitive guidance. 
So I've mentioned Mercury in the Gandanta, but also Neptune is opposition Venus at the time of this full moon. And the positive side of that is that Neptune and Venus can combine to show us the ideal in love and beauty. And that's now. And the next important step in the analysis is that Mercury is actually the apex planet of a yard. A yard is a long, thin triangle with a small base known as the finger of God because it puts a very special um, importance on the quality of the apex planet, which here is Mercury. And Mercury, of course, is all about communication. But as you can see, that Mercury communication will be arising out of some very intuitive settings, very visionary settings, potentially, if you're open to developing that sort of ability. And the other key point is that the, the two planets that are the base of the yard, the long finger that points in Mercury, the finger of God, the other two planets are Pluto sextile Neptune. And the positive side of that is quite high sensitiveness, potential for purified soul life, highly, ima uh, highly active imagination. For some people, clairvoyant visions and certainly second sight. Yes, opening to delving into unusual and supernatural phenomena and mysticism. This yod, this finger of God, is all about self-knowledge through inner realisation of truth. But there's more to this new moon. Using the nakshatras, the supremely wonderful 27 sign lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology, Sun, Moon and Mercury are all in Ashlesha nakshatra at the end of a Vedic Cancer. Now Ashlesha nakshatra has the difficulty that it can be far too critical but Ashlesha Nakshatra people can develop out of and through that. And in addition to that, divine inspirational openings. And then we can use those openings, which we should be on the lookout for tomorrow in the new moon, to apply the logical planning side of Mercury to making the right decisions about what to drop from our life, what to prioritise in our life, what protection and nurture to maintain, and what revolution we might have to bring in. And um, as the Sun, Moon and Mercury are all in Vedic Cancer, of course, bring into your meditation the issues of what nurtures me. What are the things that nurture me in my life? What strands nurture me and are they for make me, especially me, because they nurture me? And so this gives us the opportunity to combine the sun, which is our will and our egoic personality, with our emotional and unconscious drive, which is the moon, and as I've mentioned, Mars is in kingly warrior Leo. Let action arise out of your time for taking stock. And you see, it is, in, it is a time of tense revolution now. It's very important to try and get things right for your life path. Because at this very difficult time, um, for example, Uranus is sending a square aspect to Saturn. And indeed, Saturn is opposite this new moon. So this new moon, wonderful though its potential is, 
is caught up in the super tense energies of Uranus, the planet of revolution discovered at the time of the storming of the Bastille, pitting himself against Saturn's blocks and walls. The negative side of Saturn experience. And so there's a an energy of demand for revolution, both on your personal level and also in the level of our societies. So when we focus with meditative awareness on the sensitive, immaterial, inspirational, even visionary potential of this penetrating new moon, at the same time, we'll each be called up in this war of the titans, Uranus demanding needed revolution, Saturn fighting back with blocks and structures. So we need to develop our inspiration now. And not only that, um, Remember that Rahu, the North Node, is sending an aspect to Saturn too. And when Rahu aspects Saturn in this way, the energy is tense and full of fear. So you can see why it's so important just to try and take some time, maybe if it's only five minutes, to attune to what's going on, to what's arriving in your consciousness, to what your nurture needs are, and to what changes, what revolutionary changes, if necessary, you need to implement. Uh, the other factor, of course, is that Pluto is in Vedic Capricorn with Saturn. Pluto is pitting against Saturn too. And so Pluto explosively demands our true and proper power. And Saturn, you know, can block our power because of our childhood upbringing and societal scripts and all that sort of thing. And it's made even more important at this time because... It is the time of the Pluto return of the United States. Pluto in the heavens is closing on the position of Pluto in the birth chart of the United States. The Pluto return gets exact for the first hit in um, about April 2023. And so much will have to arise in the United States, which will affect the whole world. So much will have to arise to be dealt with issues of disempowerment and wrong use of power. So my prayer is that you can use this new moon energy to guide you to your needed new Jerusalem at this very tense and revolutionary time, do have a look at the blog that accompanies this video because it gives you know, more of the astrological detail and it's worth knowing. Do set aside time to have this attunement intuitive connection with the energies. The actual new moon of August the 8th is around 1450 hours UTC. Um, do, do, don't miss this opportunity, it is quite special. And certainly um, go to my Star Wheel Astrology website and go to the by page and book a reading with me so that we can talk through your agenda for change at this time, the strategies for change. It's a very worthwhile time, this. Thank you.